Max, good morning. Um, hey, you've been in the NCAA games before. You, you know, in these kind of do or die situations, how do you tweak your game if you do that at all? Any different approach? No, I wouldn't say a different approach. I mean, uh, we've been approaching every game the same way, you know, like NCAA tournament games. So the approach doesn't change at all. I think, if anything, it's, it's really the, the little things that, that matter even more, especially at this time of the year. Any follow-up, Thomas? Like, when you say little things, like, maybe what are you talking about specifically? Uh, well, I mean, for, for one, at this time of the year, um, you know, making sure you're taking care of your body, um, getting your sleep, um, little things like that off the court. Um, and then on the court, I mean, little things that we see on film to fix, um, you know, ball screen coverages you might have messed up, um, you know, matching up in transition. So just little things like that, um, you know, they're really important at this time of the year. Eric Henry, go ahead, please, sir. What's going on, Max? Just kind of want to piggyback off of TJ's question there. You know, I'm sure you've heard it said in, in pro basketball, you know, the difference between regular season and the playoffs in terms of the speed and intensity of the game. Just want to ask, in your experience, do, do you find that, maybe the speed of the game or the intensity of the game picks up to a different level uh, come March? Uh, I think the, the speed is the same. Um, I think maybe the intensity, I mean, just because, I mean, you're playing, I mean, everybody doesn't want to go home. Everybody wants to keep playing and continue their season. Um, so everybody plays with a greater urgency. Um, and then, you know, especially at this time, I mean, every team in the field is a good team. They've all had great years. So, um, you know, you're playing the best in the country. Perry Middleton, go ahead, please, sir. Max, good afternoon. So I'm really curious, you know, the next six games, all, all the players are going to have to be operating at a very high level. How do you, as a leader, Dylan, as a leader, how do you bring those other guys like a Tyrese, like a Caden, like a Dylan Mitchell, so that they're playing at their optimal level? Because if those guys aren't in it, you and Dylan are not going to win the, the national title, right? So how do you guys do that as a team to get everybody scoring and operating at a high level? Well, I think for one, um, I mean, you, you kind of said the next six games, but I think the important thing for us is to really stay in the moment um, and take it one game at a time. Um, you only, you know, promise 40 more minutes. Um, so we got to have the right approach with that. Um, I think it starts in practice, um, practicing with the right intensity, um, just understanding, um, you know, kind of the the level that we have to play with. Um, and, and, I mean, it, it really comes down to us on the defensive end. Um, I feel like we can score. Um, you know, we'll find ways to score. Um, but the important thing is on the defensive end, um, you know, playing for a full 40 minutes. All right. Thank you. Josh Newman, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Max, how are you? Doing good. Um this is a bit of a unorthodox situation. You know, you, you don't know who your opponent is yet. You have to wait to see how the first four plays out on Tuesday night. Um, it hasn't been that long since you found out, you know, your seed and everything, but how, how is prep work uh, and getting ready here sort of changing, uh, not knowing who your opponent is yet? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, we're scouting for both opponents. I mean, both are really good teams um, and, and it'll be a really good game. So i um, kind of scouting for both opponents. Um, kind of working on, you know, different coverages that, you know, they'll they'll do on a, on their defensive side and then um, kind of different plays and, and the way they play on the offensive end too. So um, we're scouting for both, um, and we know, you know, we'll get a good um, good uh, matchup no matter what. And just a quick follow-up, uh, this is your third tournament, right, Max? Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, just what are the emotions of, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you went to two or, or, or Roberts, now get to go again. What are the emotions of being able to do this one more time? Man, I'm excited. I mean, it's, you know, last year, um, you know, to, to have opportunity to compete in the NCAA tournament, I mean, it, it's, it's the reason, you know, I came to Texas. Um, and so, um, you know, you work all summer, um, all fall for this moment right here um, for March Madness. And so um, I, I think I'm excited. I know all the guys are excited too. Um, so, so we're just doing everything we can to prepare ourselves for the game. John, hi, go ahead, please, sir. Max, uh, the way you guys, it's been an up and down season for you. Uh, you beat some good teams, lost to some you probably shouldn't have. What makes you think that y'all can can make a, a decent run in this tournament? I think um, later on in the season, um, we kind of had, had like a little turning point for us. Um, and, and that, um, you know, kind of the way practice was ran, how the um, intensity picked up a whole lot. Um, and I think I feel like since then, you know, we've been playing some of our best basketball and I mean, it's, that's important um, in this time of the year, um, you know, to be playing your best basketball in, in March. Senator Golden, please go ahead. Hey, Max, uh, you know, Kendall Weaver has been 
electric at times this season. He's an energizer bunny off the bench for you guys. Um, uh, what have you said to him, uh, and what will you say to him leading into this tournament? This will be his first NCAA tournament experience and uh, being the older guy. Uh, what will you say to him to kind of uh, let him know what he's in store for with this March Madness? Uh, I mean, I just tell him to to really just um, stay in the moment and enjoy it. I mean, there's there's nothing like your first time in March Madness um, kind of experiencing everything. Um, but really just tell him, I mean, just go out there and be himself. Um, you know, don't overthink it too much. At the end of the day, we've been playing high-level basketball all year. So um, uh, the stakes are much higher for sure, you know, win or go home. But um, as long as, you know, he, he he's himself, um, he brings that energy he always brings, um, he'll be just fine. Any follow-ups, Ed? Yeah, uh, your coach, uh, we asked him about the uh, possibility of playing Rick Barnes in the second round. And uh, also there's a storyline with Kate and Shedrick. You guys have all these storylines. He may play Virginia. Um, uh, about Caden, uh, what's what's been the locker room vibe and the, the possibility of him playing against his old teammates? Because y'all were getting after him a little bit at the announcement. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good vibes. I mean, um, you know, he's excited. I mean, we're all excited. Um, you know, we don't know who we're going to play yet. Um, but, I mean, either way, I mean, he's going to be excited to play the game and, you know, whether it's Virginia or Colorado State. Roger Wallace, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Max, you, you, you've you been on a run and been kind of the focal point. Uh, Dylan and some of the core guys on that run last year, how important is it going into this that you've got guys that not only have experience but tournament success experience? I think it's important. I mean, um, kind of even uh, going back to the summer with RT putting the team together, um, you know, a lot of older guys who have experience playing in the NCAA tournament. Um, and I think one of the big things is just – um, with having some of the success in the tournament, just understanding how to win um, and, what, and what it takes to win. So um, I think that's definitely, um, you know, big for us. Tyler Feldman, go ahead, please, sir. That's what's going on. I want to take you back to when you were in grade school, middle school, high school, the teacher brought the television out for you guys to watch some first round games of the tournament. Do you remember your fondest March Madness memory that kind of elevated your love for the game? And then maybe for you, what do you love most about this time of the year? Oh, man, I can't think of anything specifically. Um, I, I remember in high school, uh, we know we all had iPads. So so once it got to March, man, everybody had the March Madness games going on in class, kind of tuned into those. Um, everybody kind of filling out brackets. Um, so I remember that for sure. But, I mean, it's just an exciting time of the year. Um, just because you've worked so hard, you know, for this point, you know, starting in the summer. Um, and it's been a long season. It's been a long journey up to to the point we're at right now. And so um, we had to really embrace it and, and enjoy every part of it. JT, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Max. <clears throat> Regardless of who y'all face in the opening round, um, you're going to be playing against a really strong point guard. You know, Isaiah Stevens is a high-level facilitator for Colorado State. And for Virginia, Reese Beekman is the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. For you personally, how does having a balance for two very different uh, offenses and defenses kind of work for you? Oh, well, I think, I mean, for one, we're kind of preparing for both of them. I mean, but, I mean, if you look at kind of, you know, who we've played, I mean, throughout the Big 12, um, you know, in non-conference too, I mean, we played against kind of both sides of it. You know, we played against, you know, high-level offensive teams and we played against high-level defensive teams too. So um, I feel like, you know, our, our um, kind of resume throughout the whole season has kind of, um, you know, built us up um, for this point, you know, whether we play Colorado State or Virginia. Max, thanks for your time. Appreciate Appreciate you. Considering, you know, the, uh, unless you guys win the whole thing, the last game, okay, this will be the last time you're putting on a Texas uniform. Yeah, I mean, it definitely plays a role, a factor. I don't want it to be over. Um, Brock doesn't want it to be over. Max doesn't want it to be over. Um, so um, there's definitely extra motivation um, for us personally. Um, but this team, that I mean, we want to make a run. So um, they don't. everyone doesn't want it to be over this season to be over. So I think that's the, the main motivation for us. Thomas Jones, go ahead, please, sir. Dylan, good morning. Um, Tuesday night, you guys will find out who you, who you play in the first round. So what do you do Tuesday? Do you watch the game as a fan, kind of? Do you watch it at all? Are you watching it almost like scouting? Do you get with your teammates or some friends? How, what's Tuesday going to look like for you? 
Yeah, I'm sure uh, we'll watch it as a team. Um, we'll, we leave on Tuesday morning. We'll have a practice. Um, we'll eat dinner together that night. Um, and then I'm sure we'll watch it together as a team. Um, but you just watch it, uh, not as a fan, but um, just watching um, the guys that you'll be guarding, um, see how you would play certain things, um, kind of get a, a feel for how the other team's going to play, um, both teams. Um, and then whoever the winner is, it, it, you'll, you'll, you know, feel them out. Any follow up, Thomas? Terry Middleton, go ahead, please, sir. Dylan, so I'm curious, uh, what has practice been like? How has the intensity level been in practice for both offense and defense? And also, has there been any effort, or I don't know how to, if it's effort, or uh, Tyrese Hunter, Caden, Cedric, Dylan Mitchell, those guys have to score if, if you guys are going to go deep. And so what has that been like in practice to get those guys the ball? Yeah, I mean, practice has been um, very intense the last – uh, three days. Saturday was a, a really tough one. Um, we got after each other a lot. Um, first first group versus the second group. Um, so those were good. Uh, as far as like, we don't force feed like Tyrese, Caden, and and um, D. Mitch, um, but we definitely encourage them to continue to score. I mean, Tyrese can score the ball. Like we, we don't have to force him the ball. Um, it's just about getting him good shots um, within the flow of the offense. Him. You know, just slowing down, getting to his spots, taking to, uh easy shots, and rather than like contested tough threes, um, and and he'll be fine. D. Mitch just getting him backdoor cuts, lobs, getting him pick and roll, um, get actions, things like that. And then for Kane, it's just him slowing down around the basket, getting good looks, uh, whenever he's posted up, um, and scoring and shooting confidently, and he'll be all right. So that's kind of just the emphasis that we put on them. It's not yeah. so much about forcing them the ball or anything like that. And just as a follow-up, how are you feeling? 100%? You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I feel great. Awesome. Thank you. Josh Newman, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Dylan, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Um, Just to follow up on an earlier question, what was uh, last night like? And just what do you expect to get, like today and most of tomorrow to be in terms of prep, not knowing the opponent, you know, two sets of film, two scouts? What do you, what do you sort of expect the next, like, 48 hours to be like? Yeah, we already had practice this morning. Um, practice was um, more more about us, what we're going to do. Um, both teams kind of trapped the post, so we worked on that. Um, and we just worked on the things that we have to work on, like our transition defense wasn't great in the last game um, and our pick and roll defense. So um, regardless of who we're playing, both teams are going to get in a pick and roll. So, you know, we're working on pick and roll defense and working on what we um, need to improve on as a team. And then once we find out who we play, then it'll become more specific about – um, player tendencies and, and scouting. And just to follow that up real quick, um, this is your third NCAA tournament. You've been through this process before, but just what are the emotions sort of like, you know, doing this again and and really for the final time? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's fun. Every every Not everyone gets a chance to play in the NCAA tournament, so it's not something I take for granted. Um, my old teammate from Vanderbilt played for five years, uh, and he transferred to LSU, and still he didn't make the tournament. He was really upset about that. Uh, we've talked about that, so... Um, just just taking this, um, not not taking it for granted and really appreciating the, the blessing to be able to play in the tournament um, because not a lot of people do get to play in this tournament. Tyler Feldman, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Dale, I'm local kid. I'm wondering, was there a moment when you were watching the Longhorns growing up in the tournament where you kind of reflect and was there a time when you were a kid and your, your biggest March Madness memory that you have um, that kind of sticks with you through the years? Um, I wasn't really watching basketball that much when I was super young, whenever they were making the Sweet 16 with Aldridge and, and KD um, and those guys. Um, I think I'm trying to think of my earliest memory of like tournament basketball because I was so young. I didn't I wasn't there for the final four run or the elite eight runs. But I, I remember. I'm just trying to think. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Austin, Isaiah, Isaiah something. I can't remember his last name. Taylor, Isaiah, Isaiah Taylor. Taylor. I, remember, I think they won a game. I remember watching that. I remember watching the the, the game with Mo Bamba um, and just how upset he was that they, they actually lost to Nevada. Um, so th those are kind of my memories uh, of of Texas basketball in the tournament. But they, they kind of struggled there for a little while whenever I was really getting into basketball. Um, Shaka, I didn't, you know, he, he struggled to – 
to get one under his belt. And then at the end of uh, Coach Barnes's tenure, um, they struggled a little bit in the tournament. So I don't really have, um, like, you know, really deep memories of, of their deep runs back in the day. Um, but I, I have seen, I did watch, you know, them get to the tournament and, and, and not be successful. And so that kind of stuck with me. I didn't want to be, be like that for sure. That's kind of what my, my motivation was for my memories. Any follow up, Tyler? Maybe, I, maybe just as while well, Texas was maybe struggling a little bit in the tournament, was there a player or a team that you loved to kind of that you you got that feel from of what it's like and what what it could be like winning this time of year? The play, okay, I, my favorite player growing up was uh, uh, he's a local guy too. God, I know his name. I don't know why I'm blinking on it now. AJ, uh, AJ, yeah, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved his his two. He had his, he used to wear two tone sleeve back in the day, half orange, half white, and I thought that was the coolest thing. Um, and they were really good uh, back then. It was him and um, uh, Augustine. Um, but I don't remember. Obviously, I don't remember their runs. But I just remember watching them a couple of times and hearing them um, play against A and M on the radio with my mom uh, back when when uh, either A and M or Texas was really ranked really high. I think maybe them both um, back when they had uh, they had really good teams in, at A and M. So I remember. I'm um, just listening to that and feeling very excited to to listen to that and watch those games. Um, so those are my earliest memories for sure. John, hi. Go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Dylan. Uh, Max was talking about for this tournament, you want to embrace every, every part of it and enjoy it. What makes you think that you guys will be embracing and enjoying it past this first weekend? Yeah, I mean, um, we're not looking like – ahead or looking at who we're going to be playing in the next round or even in the second weekend or anything like that we're focused on um one of the two teams that we're going to play on thursday but we are we are excited uh, we believe in our team and, and what we have and the pieces that we have and that um if we go out and play um the best the, the best basketball that we have played this season that we'll, we'll come out and we'll be okay um we can compete with any team um and we, we have a strong belief in our team any follow-up john no. We don't need Julian Larry in the NCAA tournament to next year. I mean, I, I like you, you saying that, but then you, what do you say to the folks that say this team just got bounced and, and went one and out in the conference tournament? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question, honestly. Um, I mean, people are going to say what they want to say. Uh, like, there's a lot of hate that goes around, um, but just talking to um, our teammates and like Tyrese Hunter, his team got bounced in the first round two years ago, Iowa State. Um, and I think they lost by 30 to Texas Tech in the first round of the Big 12 tournament. And then they end up going to the Sweet 16. So it's not about um, what happened in the past or what happened in the last tournament. Um, and honestly, we're, we're using that as motivation. We, we didn't want to lose to Kansas State. We didn't want to want that game to go the way it went. Um, we felt like we could have we could have won that game and, and made a run in that tournament. Um, but we didn't. And so we had to sit with that this last week, this, this past weekend. And we used that as motivation to, to come back, practice hard. Um, work on things that we need to work on, hold ourselves accountable, um, and come out and play our best basketball next, uh, on Thursday. Mike Harge, go ahead, please, sir. What up, Dylan? How you doing, man? Representing the Flukerville Hawks. I like that, Hendrickson Hawks. I like that. So quick question for you, two-part. Number one, obviously, what would you want your legacy to be known for here at the University of Texas after you make this run in the tournament? And then the second part of it is, hey, Last year, you put yourself on the map in front of a lot of people, played well. Unfortunately, you got the injury, and you wanted to get back to this point. Now that you're back to this point, what's your thought process? Um, For the first – or I did the second part, my thought process. Um, There's no, like – I don't feel pressure to force things or score 28 points like I did last year or anything like that. Uh, uh, my thought process is just go play basketball and do what we've done all year. Um, I mean, we've been successful whenever we play as a team, um, move the ball. Um, sometimes it may be my night. Sometimes it might be Max's night. Sometimes it might be Tyrese, DM. It could be anybody's night on that first that first game that we got. Um, so just playing basketball and letting the thing, and letting the game come to me. Um, and if it is my night, then I, I'll, I'll embrace that. And if not, then I'll embrace my teammate who who's having a great night and um, if we do that, we'll be successful. So that's kind of my thought process going back into the tournament. Um, obviously, I'll have to lead as an older guy and, um, you know, help my teammates that might not have been there, uh, have, have been to the tournament before. Um, but that that's that's nothing new for me. 
Um, and then as for what was the first part? The first question was your legacy, your legacy, what you want people to take away from your time here at the University of Texas. Yeah, I just want people to take away the fact that I was a local kid that decided to come back home because I love the university. I love this this community. I love the city. Um, and I want them to know I played as hard as I could for the Longhorns. Sad, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Dylan, a uh, case could be made. You guys would have been in the Final Four if you hadn't gotten hurt last year. Um, how how tough was that uh, Miami game, uh, having, having to watch it and not be able to play in it? And uh, how how did that fuel you uh, entering this final season of your college career? Yeah, it was difficult to watch that game, um, not being able to help your teammates and then actually seeing them um, kind of fall there at the end. That was tough. Um, but uh, feeling that feeling and, like, getting to that that point in the tournament definitely motivated me to want to get back there um, and not have to feel that feeling again. So that's kind of been – uh, you know, the motivation I've used, I guess you could say. Um, just wanted to get back to that that feeling of being able to uh, make it that far. It, it was the most fun time in my life, for sure, um, playing and making that deep run. Um, and so I want to be able to feel that again. What got you through? Um, because uh, for a young person to not be able to play, uh, what, what did, who did you lean on? Was it, was it your teammates? Was it your folks? Uh, what got you through that tough period? Yeah, I mean, um, a lot of people were there for me uh, throughout the summer um, and my injury process. That my parents, for sure, my mom, um, my the people I work out with, my trainers, obviously the coaching staff was there for me as well, my teammates. Um, but I also, like, I just – I feel like things happen the way that they're supposed to happen. Um, God has a plan for me. Um, it wasn't his plan for me to play in that, that Sweet 16 in the Elite Eight game. Um, and so I just have to, you know, accept that um, and keep it pushing and hope that he has something better for me down the road. Last one, Chip Brown, please. Dylan, kind of following up on that, when you got into foul trouble against K-State, um, what was that feeling like? And and do you realize how important you are to this team, uh, you being on the floor? Yeah, that was a tough situation. Um, obviously, calls aren't always going to go your way. Um, you know, we don't blame the officiating for or the officials for anything or losing that game or anything like that. You know, I've just got to um, try to be smarter in certain situations and um, maybe not dive for loose balls or um, post up too hard um, so that, you know, they're not um, ready to make that call, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, I definitely know that I need to stay on the floor. Um, that's been a big emphasis um all year um so i'm going to do my best in the tournament to stay on the floor um and, and make sure i'm not fouling when people say texas is a dangerous team in this tournament when is texas at its best at its most dangerous what what's happening i think um texas at its most dangerous when we're all five all five guys on the floor um are playing hard on defense and covering up for each other um, as long as that's happening, um, it's, it's really hard to score on Texas. That's a wrap. Dylan, thank you for your time. Appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate y'all.